Good afternoon and good morning. It's Mark Johnson from More Than 360. I hope everyone's happy, safe, and well. I want to welcome you back to another edition of our Leaders and Customer Loyalty Series. In this series, we talk to the brand leaders about what they are seeing and hearing on the front lines of customer channel and brand loyalty. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Glenn Bradley. He's Group Vice President of Marketing at Price Chopper Supermarkets and Market 32, which combined uh, recently and have almost 300 locations. Glenn, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today. Good morning, Mark. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's been a while since we last spoke, but uh, it's always great to catch up with you and uh, see what you're up to. Uh, for those who don't know, can you tell us a little bit more uh, about Price Shop or Market 32, what you guys are and, and, and how you do it and what you do? Sure. Uh, Price Shop or Market 32, we're a regional supermarket chain in the Northeast. We've got a, uh, 131 stores under the Price Shopper and Market 32 banners. Okay. Uh, currently, I'm the group vice president of marketing, and that entails everything you would expect from advertising and analytics, uh, shopper marketing, digital marketing, e-commerce, and uh, of course, what we're going to talk about today is loyalty marketing. Absolutely. Um, also, we love to uh, get uh, background on those we speak with, those we interview, kind of a personal side. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? You talked a little bit about your uh, maybe even a, a kind of a, a fun fact. We like to talk to people about a passion they may have, boating or working, or we have people that like gaming and extreme skiing. What do you, do you have any, any kind of a passion uh, in, uh, in, within you? No, nothing quite as exciting as that, but uh, I have worked my entire life in the grocery industry, started as a bagger. Um, might not be that unusual. Uh, I am from a New Hampshire originally, so I am uh, all Boston sports fans, heavily uh, Red Sox, Patriots, Celtics, Bruins fan, which is sometimes difficult working in upstate New York for the last 30 years. We do have some interesting discussions and, uh, and sometimes find, people find my backgrounds um, or articles in my office, maybe uh, start some conversations. I cleaned it out for today though. Well, that's all right. Uh, I'm a Bronco fan, so uh, Denver fan, so I've had kind of a rough week. Uh, Nuggets and the Avalanche are losing out, but uh, I expected the Nuggets to lose out, but the Avalanche uh, choking like they did was uh, not fun, but that, that's a whole different story. Yeah, it's been a little bit of a tough run for uh, NBA and NHL playoffs for me, but it's baseball season. That's what we're focused on. There you go. Good. Um, so can you give us a short history of uh, Price Chopper Market 32 and kind of what you guys do? Kind of that would be great to know kind of history of, of Sure, we're, we're founded in 1932. That's where the reference of Market 32 and our, some of our banner names come from. Founded by the Golub family here locally uh, in Green Island, New York. We're currently based in Schenectady, New York. And um, we have a long history of being a promotional retailer, emphasizing fresh foods and of course our loyalty program. Okay. So you launched the Advantage Ed Rewards in 2019. Can you give us an update on uh, how things are going, the program, uh, some improvements that you made in the program and, and, and how you leverage the program? Sure, we, we've had a loyalty card for about 30 years and we had a fuel-based loyalty program with discounts at our partner Sunoco for about the last 15 years. Uh, we've made changes to that program in 2019, converted it to Advantage Rewards points-based, which allows for discounts on fuel, if that's what you'd like, uh, but also discounts at the register off your grocery bill. Uh, that was a very big win for us. It actually took us a few months to get all of the stores converted, and we converted just a few months before COVID hit, uh, which slowed our timeline a little bit. But we have recently also announced uh, some enhancements to Advantage Rewards with a digital platform with four new ways for people to use their points. Um, and that's also helped give us something new, exciting, and fresh for the customer and really built our participation levels. Okay. So there's a big push within grocery, as we see from uh, the interviews we do, member, non-member, kind of moving into digital, that digital transformation everyone's talking about. So what are the kind of things that you're doing to kind of push that digital transformation and the four new ways that you can redeem points? What are those? Yeah, so we uh, created a digital platform which will allow folks uh, to earn and redeem points uh, online without coming to the store. Of course, this works tremendously for e-commerce 
where people are not coming into the store, but there's also people looking for a different variety of ways to use their points. So far, we've only announced things on the redemption side and the four new ways that you can redeem points is to support your local schools, to support uh, some charitable organizations that we've selected to pay down student loans, either for yourself or other family or friends. And we also have some sweepstakes and prizes uh, available online. That's awesome. So it, it seems like those are obviously very emotionally uh, kind of attached school education, yours, yourself, your kids, uh, and then paying down student loans obviously has a kind of ethereal uh, impact as well. So those, uh, those are great ways to uh, redeem your points. So can you use your points for fuel and rewards or, or do you get to choose between both or how, how does that work now? Yeah, it's all about customer choice. Uh, they're earning points and they can use them for food, fuel, or any of the four new ways. Um, and they do not need to make a choice in advance. They can choose on any given day or any given week how they'd like to use their points. Okay, great. I know with uh, Price Chopper, Market 32, you guys do a lot with community partnering. Uh, you, you have donate funds, you in, in kind promotional support to kind of national, regional, and grassroots causes. Is that something that you've always had? Um, and, and how does that enhance your overall customer loyalty and customer engagement efforts? Yeah, community support is one of our brand pillars, uh, community support in everything we do. And it's been with the company since the founding as part of our uh, goal of family support for communities. We have something we call the 32 reasons to shop market 32. And the number one reason is that we're your community partner. Uh, we've incorporated that in the past in our loyalty program, because we've had a school support option uh, for a couple of decades, but now we're able to more um, closely link our loyalty program with the community, but also with charity and also with student loans, which is really a big problem for a lot of folks. So we, we do feel like we finally brought loyalty program up to where the, the company expects us to be. That's awesome. And, and the school program, so is that traditionally like a, a script program that uh, a lot of entities ran for a number of years? Yeah, we had a little different variation on it. You needed okay. to uh, sign up your loyalty card and link it to your school and all of your purchases would generate stars that the schools could use to redeem for equipment. Um, okay. So it's definitely similar to uh, what you see out there in the industry. Uh, and we're still running a version of that, although now we're allowing people to donate directly their points and also to take some actions online to earn their school additional uh, points or stars to support that, that particular school. Okay. And during the pandemic, we saw a number of uh, retailers, grocers, uh, uh, people who have loyalty programs, you know, add some flexibility to the program, or at least try to add flexibility to this program to support charities, to support local organizations uh, with some varying degree of success. What are you seeing um, in regard to kind of charitable causes, donations? Is that something that you've seen kind of a, a greater in interest in? Is it, and, and if so, is it due kind of the local nature of the program? Because as I mentioned, uh, we've kind of seen uh, some groups that are doing very well and some struggle. Some people uh, uh, don't necessarily want to give points to charity as much as they, they may say they have an interest in doing so. What are you seeing in that regard? Yeah, well, certainly it's, it's early days for us and we're still finding out where the customer is going to end up. Uh, I know some of the folks that have struggled with those programs had it as a short-term option. This is not a short-term play for us. It's a long-term option. We don't expect that uh, donating to charity or schools is going to be as popular as taking money off your groceries. There's an awful lot of folks who need that discount off their groceries, but we do expect it to be attractive to uh, somewhere up near 10% of customers will actually uh, donate to either the schools or the charitable option. Okay, that's good. That's all. I think that's, that's, a, that's a, a kind of a, a great number. Um, again, based on what we were saying, I think that's uh, kind of a, a prudent number too, because I think a lot of retailers thought that oh, it'll be a, a much greater number. And then when they didn't have that, it, it, I think that's uh, based on what we see, I think that's, that's, a, that's a great 
great uh, shot, uh, uh, great estimate. I think yeah, that's actually good to see how you guys do. So when you look at customer loyalty, we always like to talk to the brands that we speak with to understand kind of what customer loyalty means to you and, and obviously to the organization. So what does, organ what does customer loyalty mean to you and, and price shop? Sure, customer loyalty, I mean, by default, we have to do some of the quantitative measurements and look at share of wallet, um, spending over time, customer lifetime value. Uh, but really, we like to score against, uh, are we retaining customers over the long haul? And are we creating brand advocates who will bring their family and friends to shop with us and who will help build our brand image? That's a measure of loyalty to us beyond the quantitative measures. So how has your customer loyalty, customer experience strategy evolved uh, beyond just a uh, sole focus on transactions? You've talked about some of your corporate social responsibility, the charitable givings, uh, the schools. Uh, you know, what other methods do you use to engage and reward your customers? And yeah, certainly the, the history of loyalty is all about transactions and offers and deals on that particular day. Uh, we have had a long focus on personalization within some other elements of whether it's a shopping list or uh, recipes that we know would be attractive to you. We think there's still a big opportunity in some of those areas. Our new digital platform really is just uh, the foundation that will allow us to bring in some additional partners for both earning points, exchanging points, and redeeming points that pushes us way past transactional level. Uh, we just haven't announced some of those things yet. Okay. Uh, and, and question for myself, you know, how do you keep up with, uh, can keep the program so fresh? Do you, how do you, you belong to kind of marketing groups? Do you develop this yourself? Do you work with uh, kind of outside agencies? Because it seems that from a, especially from a grocery perspective, you're, you're pushing the envelope pretty quickly. Yeah, we certainly um, know that loyalty is an important part of why customers choose to shop with us. And we need to be uh, on the cutting edge of offering them new opportunities. And we've had to align with a number of really important partners within loyalty. So, uh, you know, Oracle, Algonomy are both really important partners for us for our loyalty personalization efforts. And for the new offers, the digital platform and the, where we're going in the future, TCC is our partner. Uh, a combination of those partners, some really important internal think tank work and some uh, relationships we have with share group members of other regional retailers around the country have helped us develop a roadmap for the next couple of years of things that we want to bring on. Uh, and then from there, it takes a focus from the department and it really takes the corporate leadership backing us to push the envelope and continue to push forward. We, we never just have a, a launch and say we're set. We have a launch and we're on to the next several phases. Okay. So what is the most significant challenge you face with regard to technology? You talk about personalization. You know, personalization is a big uh, area of interest for uh, grocers, retailers, travel entertainment, any who, anyone who has a customer loyalty focus. But doing it at scale, having the right technology, as you mentioned, can be a big challenge. You know, what is the most significant challenge you face with regard to technology? Yeah, it's, it's always been a huge challenge uh, to have the resources and the expertise. We have a very fine IT department, but we are a small regional grocer. We cannot have experts in every field. Uh, so we've, the, the important part for us has been to set up uh, an open ar architecture uh, that allows us to bring in partners. And uh, TCC is our key partner on the new initiatives. And we have to rely on those carefully selected third parties with the expertise to bring us to the next level. We're never going to have enough internal experts or enough IT people at our size to continue to evolve. Okay, great. When you look at personalization, you talked about personalization a little bit uh, earlier, a uh, great uh, opportunity, but it can be very challenging for brands to get the personalization and being able to do it at scale. You talked about the partnerships you have with Oracle and them being a big part of this. You know, how is your brand working to improve their personalization efforts or your personalization efforts? 
Yeah, well, opportunity for personalization is virtually everywhere. It's difficult to think of some part of the shopping journey that couldn't be improved with some level of personalization, even if the customer doesn't know that that's happening behind the scenes. So we do think there's a big opportunity within just the basics of letting people know what deals we have, what offers we have, but also recipes and meal solutions. The challenge, as you said, is to get that done at scale, with speed, with limited human intervention. And that really comes down to aligning yourself with the right partners and having the right database and architecture set up. So yeah. Algonomy is going to be an important partner for us on a lot of those elements. Uh, the changes in technology from even five years ago are so dramatic that what's possible um, is something that you couldn't even have imagined 10 years ago. And five years ago, you might have dreamed you could do it, but you couldn't figure out how to do it at our size and scale. And I, and I think now we can over the next couple of years. Okay. Excellent. Partnerships are uh, a big and growing area for brands, especially within our community. We have a, a kind of a partnership network that we've developed that help with introductions, facilitation of those. But CPG partnerships uh, have been you know, very important to grocery, as everyone knows as well. You know, how are you looking at partnerships um, and it, will they have kind of a bigger uh, impact or larger focus going forward for uh, Price Chopper Market 32? Yes, I mean, as you mentioned, uh, we've had a long history of working with our CPG partners on the merchandising side and on the sharper shopper marketing side, uh, not as much in loyalty. That's changing now as we've got created the digital platform and brought on more uh, opportunities to partner with our CPGs. But it's also opened up opportunities for people outside of traditional CPG that we feel we can partner with now that we have a, uh, a scalable, open, flexible digital platform. We'll be looking for partners outside of traditional grocery industry, uh, but more, more on that to come in the future. Well, that's good. Looking forward to hearing more about that because it definitely is an area of interest. Um, when, when you look at the CPG partnerships, one of the things we've heard from grocers is that kind of that, that digital transformation, uh, kind of this, the whole the slotting fees, the promotional fees, it, it was kind of a, a big change for traditional CPG, CPG relations. When you get to more of that data-driven, that market insight, that smaller um, that kind of engagement with the CPGs, which leads to a bigger paradigm. You know, is that something you saw as well? Kind of initially, there was a kind of a little change uh, with regard to how the CPG relationships were managed, but now it's kind of led to kind of, as you share data, you engage with them. It's kind of a different relationship or you do not see that as much? I think it certainly has changed, but I also don't think we're at the end of the road. It's an evolving situation and, and every CPG and every retailer is on their own timeline and their own sort of evolutionary path of understanding the difference between the digital world, the personalized world, the targeted world versus the broad-based traditional efforts that are out there. And down, you know, whether it's a total CPG or down through account reps, and regional people, everybody has to come to grips with that on their own time. And uh, hopefully we can help them with that. Okay, great. You mentioned a little bit earlier about customers are changing. We've heard that uh, going through COVID, uh, there was kind of a change in customer behavior. Uh, some are coming back. We actually have a new industry report coming out tomorrow to talk a little bit about that, which should be interesting. But you know, what are you seeing? How are your customers changing? Uh, not only at, at Price Chopper, but also maybe in, in the grocery industry as well? Yeah, you know, customers are always changing. That, that's uh, the only constant is change in our industry. What's different uh, and what's more difficult to predict coming out of COVID is what the future holds. We do know that there's been a seismic shift in the amount of e-commerce, uh, how much there's a digital and a mobile focus, how time starved people are, how they've reprioritized their lives, uh, how they've changed and adapted to working from home or school from home. And some of those are gonna return to normal and some aren't. And, and that impacts how people think about everything from what day do they shop, what time do they shop, how often they shop, and how do they think about dinner, uh, which is of course a really important concept for us. Absolutely. 
Um, it, when you look at uh, kind of the data, creating analytics, creating simplicity, obviously dashboarding it for people within the organization who may need it in different ways. You talked about, you know, even in the last five years, things have changed pretty dramatic, dramatically in working with Algonomy and uh, kind of the database uh, applications there. You know, what are some of the challenges that you face with data analytics and, and creating insight? And, and how has that changed over the past 18 months? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, resources and systems are always a challenge, but what's really changed in the last 18 months is the pace of change. Uh, you know, we used to think a weekly or a period report would be great, but you'd have to wait a longer period of time to spot trends and changes. Uh, what happened during COVID is changes were so rapid, you needed to be much closer to what's happening and be able to respond to it and respond to it with really incomplete information uh, like we all had about what's next with COVID. Um, but you needed to be able to um, act on that more quickly than you did in the past, and you needed to spot trends much more quickly. And how you talked about uh, how you're measuring the success of your customer loyalty, customer efforts. You know, you talked to some of the KPIs. What are the most important KPIs for you and in, you know, within grocery? Your audio cut out again a bit. Better, better hit that one again. So this is going to kill me. Uh, uh, I thought yeah, so. When you look at the measurement uh, of your customer loyalty, customer experience efforts, what KPIs do you and your team look at? Yeah, we have a lot of uh, metrics on the customer experience side to measure the actual transactions and the trips in the store uh, or through e-commerce, a lot about satisfaction and enjoyment and um, how they feel when they leave the store. Uh, on the loyalty marketing side, we're looking for uh, you know, things like retention and customer lifetime value. But before we even get there, the first hurdle really is participation and engagement. The average person carries somewhere between 15 and 20 loyalty cards or loyalty username passwords with them. So just using one, which you virtually use everywhere, is not really a measure of how successful you are. It's how much are people engaging with you beyond showing the card at the register or at checkout if it's online? What other things are they doing with you to interact with your loyalty program? And that's the increased participation engagement that we're really focused on right now. Perfect. What's the next big thing for customer loyalty uh, to, to, to Price Chopper? Yeah, the, the next big thing for us, our new loyalty digital platform is set up to uh, add lots of partners into the ecosystem. And, and the next big hurdle will be offering customers a chance to earn points for something beyond a purchase transaction. So it'll be some activity that they take online. They could earn and redeem through the digital ecosystem and never foot, set foot in our store and potentially never make a transaction. Uh, we just don't uh, want to announce any of the real details of that just yet. Oh, no problem at all. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing more about that. Uh, how do you think you're different uh, than the competitive set? And I, obviously the competitive set has changed a little bit. Dinner preparation entities are, could be competing against you, obviously. Food delivery services. You know, how do you feel you're different than your competitive set? Yeah, certainly, you know, there, there's a host of things that we do differently in store, whether it's our focus on fresh foods or prepared foods, uh, the shopping experience, our own brands, um, our checkout service. Those are all things we can focus on in store. Uh, in terms of loyalty, um, you know, we ran the, the fuel discount program for a very long time, but so did just about everybody else. And we added a food redemption option, which was... Uh, new and unique for a very short time, but we have competitors who are offering that. That's why we were brought out the digital platform and another way for people to engage with us on loyalty. And we haven't seen a lot of that from the competition yet. And hopefully we've moved on to expand our platform before they even get to the first stages. And the last question I have, uh, somewhat self-serving, is you know what can loyalty, loyalty 360 do to help you and your team and your uh, customer loyalty efforts and your customer loyalty journey? 
Yeah, I think Loyalty 360 is really uh, an important resource for us as we're looking for ideas and for innovation outside of grocery potentially, um, or for additional partners who may be interested in uh, developing something new and innovative. Uh, we hope to keep our program new and fresh for the customer. And that requires a constant flow of new ideas and exposure to different ideas and different people and partners. So I think that's an important uh, role that Loyalty 360 can help us with. And we're certainly looking forward to the in-person uh, meetings again, hopefully in the, in the near future. Absolutely. We're looking forward to that. Hopefully things go well for our October meeting. Um, and I think this has been a great interview. Great to hear what you are doing, uh, you know, at, at Price Chopper Market 32. Uh, Glenn, you always, obviously you're uh, very well respected within the industry, a lot of great insight, and it's great to hear just what you guys are you're passionate about. And uh, I think that's uh, great to hear in, in the interview. You're very passionate about what you guys are doing. And, and uh, that comes across and that's always great to hear. So thank, thank you very much, Mark. Always a pleasure. Absolutely. And thanks everyone for listening. And, uh, tune back in soon for a new edition. Have a wonderful day.